Crystal Heart and welcome to the Crystal Heart Show. It's April and this is Child Abuse Prevention Month and Trumbull County Children's Services are kicking it off with Pinwheels for Prevention Awareness Campaign. This pinwheel represents one call that was made to report child abuse or neglect in Trumbull County in 2021. There are 1,519 pinwheels on the lawn here at the Kinsman House in Warren, Ohio. The pinwheels also represent the adults who became advocates for children by reporting suspected abuse or neglect. And the message is, if you see something, say something. Contact Trumbull County Children's Services. Children are our future. We're here in Warren, Ohio at the Kinsman House and this is April and it is Child uh, Abuse Awareness Month. With us is Tim Schaffner, Great. who is the head of... Um, uh, Trumbull County Children's Services. Trumbull County right. Children's Services. Now, first of all, could you tell our audience what is the definition of child abuse? Oh, uh, child abuse and neglect are any situation that could potentially disrupt the normal growth and development of a child from physical abuse to psychological abuse, sexual abuse, um, denial of basic needs. So it's got a broad definition. And um, we're there to, to step in when, uh, when a family's really struggling. Now, outside we have a lot of pinwheels, mm -hmm. okay, and there are, what, 1,000, how many? 1,519 pinwheels, and they represent, um, each one represents a call from a responsible adult reporting possible abuse or neglect. And a pinwheel, what it stands for what? Joy and happiness for children? It does, it does. Or? It's kind of a national movement. Childhood's supposed to be happy and joyful, and everybody um, has fun with a pinwheel in the wind, and every child deserves that, and abuse and neglect disrupts that. So we want to remind uh, our community uh, what children deserve, and also remind them that they can help make sure that's not disrupted. And then from studies, and I'm sure you have a lot of studies of, of mm -hmm. child abuses, uh, does poverty, uh, drugs, um, does. mental illness, does it, does. does it all play into this? It does. You know, we used to think, oh, we, you know, we have not we, but people thought, oh, there are bad families that, that, you know, generationally don't treat their children well. But we know it's, it's the generational transfer of trauma that, um, that the parents have led a traumatic life. It's disrupted their neurodevelopment and changed the way that they interact with the world and, and their children um, then experience that at home. So we want to disrupt that cycle. And, and what are some of the signs that somebody should look for or if, with yeah. a child that's, our, that's maybe somewhat our, our been local disturbed? Our rep did a great job when he spoke today. Um, certainly and anything that might, might uh, cause you to believe that the child's physically abused, any marks on the child, et cetera. Um, any um, inappropriate sexual behavior can also be sexualized behavior, I should say, can be signs of, of sexual abuse. Um, Appearances of malnourishment or not getting their basic physical needs met can, can also be a sign of child abuse. What we always say is see something, say something, and what you see, let us decide if it's child abuse and neglect. And then people really don't need to be worried that, that, that if they report oh, something right. that, uh, you know, Where, they'll be... Wherever you're watching this from... We live on confidentiality. So um, if you're in New York, if you're in Ohio, if you're in Pennsylvania, if you're in Rhode Island, um, if you call your Child Protective Services, we will protect your confidentiality because we don't want anything to stop you from calling us. Okay, so the message here is if you see something, say something. And, and also, you know what you were saying, the schools, do, do they see it quite a bit in the schools? Or, they do. Or, they do. I mean, I would think that would be one of the first hand. When, when the pandemic happened, um, our referrals went way down, and we were very worried that there were a bunch of kids at home with no adult eyes on them, and that's picked up since then. Um, but I'm, I'm sure there were still cases missed during that time. So thank goodness for teachers and law enforcement and grandma and grandpa 
and the neighbors and all those folks who call us. You know, as I told you, I'm out from New York mm -hmm. City, and we have programs just like when COVID uh, stopped, and even in the summer for food, because yes. a lot of children, believe it or not, the only meal they're getting is the one that from the school. So our parks department also, um, we have the swimming pool. They have a, a lunch um, all summer long for the children because it's it's amazing that uh, of, of all the children that really do go hungry and it suffer. Is. Yes, it is. It, it is. And um, thankfully, our city schools continue to deliver meals to kids even when they were we're not seeing kids in person. So our buses were out every day delivering meals. And they're still, I know my kids are still getting a free breakfast and lunch every day because they want to continue that. Yeah, that was nice this year it here. Was cool. that, that, that was really nice. Yeah. Well, you know what? We were going to try to hopefully we'll see less pinwheels next there year. There you go. There that's, you go. We're that's shooting what we're for shooting none. For. Right. If you see something, say something. Thank you. Today was the kickoff of a, of a campaign to bring awareness to all of our citizens on, citizens on the um, importance of just knowing about child, child abuse and some of the resources that exist in our community to help with this issue. Um, as stated over and over again, we have 15, over 1,500 pinwheels, which represents uh, a single case of child abuse in 2021 for Trimble County children. Um, so we want to keep bringing that awareness and let everyone know uh, that there's help out there. Uh, this agency provides the hope shot that these families and these children need. So we wanted to emphasize how important it was. We wanted to thank them for their work, and I often call them uh, the, the first responders of children because they work with our law enforcement agencies, they work with the schools, they work with the cities, they work with the courts. So it's really a partnership uh, that's designed specifically to make sure that our kids are in a safe environment. And we have to eliminate all of this childhood trauma that these young people experience because the flip side of that is they end up in our courts or they end up in jail or they have all sorts of other issues <clears throat> excuse me uh, that comes with that childhood trauma so this work is some of the most important work that we can do uh, as a community and I'm just glad to be a part of it for our future and just uh, to end this what do people do to try to prevent it uh, I, I think you have to keep your eyes open, and I would ask all, all people in neighborhoods and who are around children or around schools to keep your eyes open for those signs and symptoms. Um, it could be, and, and usually kids act out what they're feeling at home. Uh, so just pay attention to what, what your kids are sometimes saying in an indirect way um, and report it. Report it to the police. If you even suspect it, report it to the police or uh, call City Hall, call Children's Services. Uh, hopefully they're not as, as severe as they, uh, they might think, but we can't just, it's, it's best to err on the side of caution when it comes to our kids. If you suspect it, talk about it, tell someone, and let us know, because we have a great uh, wraparound support system in our community to help these young people. We have a, a pinwheel uh, remembration every year, and unfortunately this year is 1,519 pinwheels. This represents 1,519 reported cases. And these are only the reported cases to Trumbull County Service, Children's Services Board. But the important thing is when those cases are reported, then those go to the professionals, those to the committed social workers, child welfare workers, and case workers to answer the problems of abuse and neglect. And really, basically, to prevent this, we see something in the community we have to say something. Report any types of irregular behavior by children to the authorities, to these child welfare employees, to the police, to teachers. And the reporting of this is, is so vitally important. But again, some irregular activity from children, um, their exposures, uh, educators see this. Uh, your neighbors see this, relatives would see this. So really, if you see something, say something. And, and ultimately, it could end to that uh, abuse of that child. But the big picture in our community is, would it be nice to celebrate that there were no pinwheels in any front yards because there's no abuse in our county, in our state, in our country? You know, have they done any studies? Is 
as far as um, mental illness or alcoholism or these uh, drugs, uh, does this all play into? Well, uh, all those, those activities, mental illness, alcohol, drugs, even in gambling for that respect, uh, all those types of addictions play into the abuse of children. And unfortunately, all those types of, of abuses uh, are counterproductive to a child's livelihood, a child's growth, a child's social atmosphere. And uh, those abuses always play, and that's such an a integral uh, issue regarding uh, the abuse of children, is the outside influences of parents, of uh, caretakers, of people that are supposedly caring for children. So the message is, if you see something, say something. Our pinwheels uh, really kicks off the child abuse uh, and neglect awareness month of April. We do that every year. And, and it's, there are really three parts to it um, that we, we bring to the community. This, was, this is the first one. And this is to emphasize awareness of the issue. We have uh, 1,519, do you know how long it took me to memorize that? Uh, pinwheels outside. And those each represent um, some caring person in the community, relative, law enforcement, calling us with a report of child abuse or neglect. Um, think about even one less pinwheel there, and that would be a child in danger without eyes and ears to take care of them. So we, we're, we're deeply grateful to our community for being aware every day. Uh, we say over and over, see something, say something. Um, if everybody takes that with you, um, that, that will help. I get a lot of calls. So I did things before um, I started here 10 years ago. And, you know, well, I don't know if I should report this or not. I have a really simple answer. It's always, yeah, let us worry about it. It's confidential um, and give us a call. The second part of our celebration is, the, um, is when we all stand up. On April the 13th is where Blue Day. Uh, so we'll take our picture in the gym, as always, all in our matching T-shirts. Um, but if you will take a picture of uh, yourself wearing blue and send it to, to us through our Facebook page, Trumbull County Children's Services, um, we'll, we would like to post it. And it's, it's just another way to visually share that we're all in it to win it, uh, to keep kids safe together. And the third part, I don't know if you can say you celebrate Child Abuse and Awareness Month, but we celebrate um, resiliency because we have our Rising Up and Moving On luncheon. If you haven't been there before, uh, come. Is registration closed, Nancy? It might be. I don't know. So call me instead of Nancy, because. Uh, OK, good. You can call Nancy. That's good. Um, but our, our luncheon every year celebrates the people that we help and the people that help us. And it's, it's a pretty powerful day. And just to give you a little preview, um, instead of having a, a statewide or national speaker this year, we're going to have a panel of our own staff who have benefited from the services of, of Trumbull County Children's Services and other children's services. Um, it really promises to be some powerful stuff. Um, I guess finally by way of welcome, sitting all together so closely is, is kind of a, a, a symbol of how we really work together. Um, we really are a community of caring. We've, we've got a grant that, that's called that, a community of caring grant. But as I travel around the state more than anybody else, um, we have constant support from our commissioners. Um, we have two, Mara wishes he could also join us today. Um, always they're standing by us. Um, all of our public servants, you'll hear from um, our commissioners and Mayor Franklin, um, who wishes he could host us this year, but he's, he's uh, gussying the place up over there. And, 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 yeah, we'll be back next year. Um, and certainly at the state legislator, uh, Mike, Mike O'Brien. Uh, law enforcement's in the room. It, I, maybe if I get out of line, I'm not sure. But no, we, we, um, we couldn't do our jobs without law enforcement, and we couldn't do our jobs somewhere. Judge Blue Doran is here. Um, we couldn't do and. We couldn't do our, our jobs without our courts, without our family court, without our probate court. Um, we have our partner agencies in the house from our Child Advocacy Center, um, 
I lived in a county and had and needed a child advocacy center. We didn't have one in our county. I always have to say that. Um, what you do for, for a child in crisis is um, there's no compare anywhere else. Uh, our partners like uh, Cadence Care Network um, are always there for us. Um, our foster parents are in the room. We have a foster and adopted parent association. Raise your hand. Uh, we have, oh, we're starting to be quiet, right? Okay. Um, we, we have about 70 some of, of the best folks on the planet who take our kids at 10 o'clock at night or two in the morning um, and love them. They stand in the gap. Um, so uh, we can't say enough about them. And um, really, again, that 1,519 people who call us. So we're, we're very grateful for that. So a constant supporter, our mayor, um, I want to introduce him, Doug Franklin. He, he hosts this every year. Um, I did, I think it was last year, I said, um, getting a little shabby around here. <laughs> he said, we got the money, we're just waiting to, to start this. Another beautiful building um, next door to here. And um, we're, we're grateful to our, to our mayor, what he does for this city, and again, his constant support. So Mayor Franklin, come on up. And Kevin Gavitt, our uh, board president, will come up Kevin. and accept the resolution. Thank you, Tim. And Thank we're you. so close, I don't need a microphone. Um, but let me, let me start my, and, and Tim, thanks for that introduction. This is, this is quite an honor uh, every year to be able to host uh, this event because it means so much to our community. Uh, having said that, I'd like to thank the Warren Heritage Center, uh, Jim Valesky and the Friends of the Kinsman House for allowing us to use this location um, for today's event. And they've done a great job in this building, as you can see. So we want to thank them for being a uh, great host uh, of this year's event. Um, just a few remarks and then I'll read the proclamation. But, but I have to say this, um, and Tim, you, you nailed it when you said that this is all of our responsibilities. This work is so important. And, and when I look out uh, at this crowd, and particularly the staff, the board members, and everyone associated with, with this agency, uh, I always think of you in the same light as law enforcement, as first responders, because there's no more precious resource that we have in our society, and particularly in our community, than our children. That's why I was glad that the young child there was making some noise during this cer ceremony. I think that's appropriate, um, because that's our responsibility to protect these young kids. Uh, that should be our life's work, and that's certainly your life's work, and you do a great job. So on behalf of the 42,337 residents of Warren, I want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you for all that you do. Um, I'm going to just read a few lines because I know there will be some other resolutions and proclamations. Um, and thank you for accepting this. Whereas the National Committee for the Pre Prevention of Child Abuse is designated April as National Child Abuse Prevention Month and Pinwheels for Prevention is a Prevent Child Abuse Ohio Public Awareness Campaign to bring awareness to child abuse and neglect in communities across Ohio and is a dramatic non-threatening visual depiction of the prevalence of child abuse and, and neglect within our community. Child abuse continues to be a major problem both nationally and locally. Child abuse and neglect ruins children's lives, destroys families, and contribute to serious societal problems inclu including juvenile delinquency and teen pregnancy. And I always think about childhood trauma. We've heard so much about that. But the fact of the matter is victims of childhood abuse and neglect are at an increased risk for smoking, alcoholism, drug abuse, depression, eating disorders, suicide attempts, multiple partners, and severe ob obesity. High levels of exposure to abuse or neglect will likely produce anxiety, anger, and depression in children. Locally, child abuse is a significant prob problem. And as the director mentioned, there are 1,519 pinwheels, which represents one report of child abuse and neglect in the year of 2021 for Trimble County. Reports of child abuse include children of all ages, from all backgrounds, from all cultures. And the best way to prevent child abuse and neglect 
is to support families and provide parents with the skills and resources they need. Whereas with everyone making this commitment, as you have, to act as a member of a caring community, family, a safer future for our children would be ensured for generations to come. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City of Warren hereby recognizes the valuable public awareness service for child abuse and the need for communi community cooperation provide by, provided by the Trumbull County Children's Services Board and the Child Advocacy Center, and further that I, William D. Franklin, Mayor of the City of Warren, hereby proudly proclaim April 2002 as Child Abuse and Neglect Prevention Month. Thank you so much for all that you do. And you know that this is truly all of our work, and I, I really value uh, this partnership. Uh, we couldn't do this work, obviously, without you. But your work is so critical, and you often go underneath the radar in terms of um, just being acknowledged and recognized for all of the help that you provide these families and these children. So God bless each and every one of you, and thank you for letting me be a part of this, this great ceremony. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mayor. Commissioner Frenchko and Commissioner Fuda, if you'd like to come up to the podium, I'll get more out of the way this time. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. It's great to be here. I'm not sure what kind of day it is, spring, fall, or winter. They change daily here. But I'm really proud of our child children's services uh, staff. We get a lot of phone calls at the, at the office. Every time I get the calls, the response is phenomenal. What they've done for our children over the last 15 years I've been here is phenomenal, and I want to thank you for all of that. We do have a resolution on behalf of the three commissioners. This is a resolution by the Board of Trumbull County Commissioners in honor of National Child Abuse Prevention Month, 17th Annual Pinwheels for Prevention, whereas the National Com Committee for the Prevention of Child Abuse has designated April as National Child Abuse Prevention Month, and whereas Pinwheels for Prevention is a campaign to bring awareness to child abuse and neglect in communities across Ohio. And whereas every child should be protected, loved, and feel safe in their home and community. Whereas during National Child Abuse Prevention Month and all throughout the year, the Board of Commissioners encourages all citizens to work together to safeguard our children, help prevent child abuse, and strive toward the hope that every child may experience a safe and happy childhood. Whereas that this board does hereby acknowledge that the month of April shall be designated as National Child Abuse Prevention Month in Trumbull County. Therefore be it resolved on April 4th, 2022, Trumbull County Children's Services <clears throat> will kick off National Child Abuse Prevention Month with their 17th annual Pinwheels for Prevention by planting 1,519 pinwheels at the Kinsman House in Warren. Each pinwheel represents one report of child abuse or neglect in 2021 and is a, meaning, and is a means to enlighten citizens of the abuse endure, endured by children in Trumbull County and to encourage their support to hurting families so that all forms of child maltreatment can be prevented. 1,519 children just in one year. That's a lot of children, a lot of abuse. We thank Tim and his staff for the phenomenal job that they do. Nikki, do you want to say some words? Commissioner Fuda said a lot. It's, it's, I just want to say thank you to everyone in the room who's working together. It takes an entire community to accomplish what we're doing. And uh, the, the children out there, you know, they appreciate you too. You know, th they're not here, obviously, but you, what you're doing just is so fantastic, especially that I was running into last week, we went to uh, 
the, a ribbon cutting, and there is a family there, the, uh, foster parents, and they, I think they had 30 children in their, in their house. And so to hear that, that we have people in the community who are that interested in, in providing safety to kids that they're just opening their doors up, that there's a new child in there, like that's their newest one. And so it was just encouraging to see uh, firsthand uh, what these families are doing and what your work um, accomplishes. It's, um, you're the unsung heroes in Trumbull County and sometimes you don't get the recognition for, for what all you do and, and we're, I'm just thankful that we could be a part of this this year and the, the Board of Commissioners is uh, we're tremendously grateful for the work that you do. It, it's always it's always good reports that we hear. And actually, I see a lot of the foster oh, parents <laughs> <laughs> going to Foster Parent Day every year. And during the year, I run into these kids as they grow older and older. It's amazing to see how successful those kids can become because of the foster parents. Where would they be without you foster parents that are there for them? But thank you. Okay, we're going to let I introduce our um, speak, main speaker. Um, I do want to, um, did you guys hear what they were talking about? So I think we have all of our new staff in the room, our new caseworkers in the room. Um, this is the Navy SEALs of social work, you guys. Um, yeah, it is. And um, we're, we're thankful for you guys joining us. And um, hope you you fall in love with the with the work like like we have today. Um, so I, I want to say how appreciative you are. And I, I saw Luther Stubbs um, also snuck in with his wonderful wife Flo. There he is. He's another one of our of our board members along with Mr. Gavitt, um, our new board president. Uh, so we, we I, I appreciate the support of, of our board. Um, they hire me to do the job, and they give me advice, and they guide me, but they also stay out of the way, and um, as in, in a good way, as, as any good board would do. So um, I really appreciate it, Kevin, uh, a whole lot. All right. Well, um, I talked about the support that we get from our from our public officials. Um, Michael Bryan has been um, a lot of things here. He's been a commissioner. He's been in a lot of your offices, hasn't he? He's been in, in Mayor Franklin's office. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what all he's done. No, when, when I first came to town, he was a probation officer. And so that, that's how I got to know him. Um, but he is so involved that um, a, a couple times he's called me from a meeting down at the state legislature and he whispers, hey, Tim, what are we thinking about this right now? Um, and um, of course I'm flattered that, that he called me, but it's not that, he's listening. He's listening in real time and he's representing. And that's what all these folks do. They represent us every day in terms of moving our community forward. So Mike O'Brien, we appreciate your support and look forward to your comments. First of all, uh, good afternoon and thanks to uh, Jim Valesky for opening the Kinsman House today. And uh, if everyone, when you leave here, if you look closely at these pictures, you might see one of Tim Schaffner. <laughs> look closely because Tim Schaffner was around then too. <laughs> but uh, on a serious note, uh, good afternoon. and. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, we were supposed to be outside, but we're inside. But at the same time, when we leave outside, we'll be able to see the pinwheels. And at uh, first glance, these pinwheels, they catch your eye because they're colorful, they're bright, and they're, they're relatively beautiful. But when they're outside, of course, they're spinning in the wind gently. But they're also a national symbol, a national symbol of healthy and happy children. But unfortunately, we're also aware that these 1,519 pinwheels represent a child that needs protection from someone who was supposed to care for them. <coughs> Coupled with the equally sobering thought that these kids are the cases that we know about. These 1,519 cases are the ones that we're made aware of. 
1,519 pinwheels. That's a lot of children, as Mayor Franklin said. Double that with the eyes that produce tears. What would it be like if the names were attached to the pinwheels? Names like Jim, Mark, Cindy, Frank, Regina, David, Sarah. Just to name a few. Those pinwheels, those names are helpless children. All kids deserve healthy childhoods and great childhood memories. And we, we here in this room, in this community, have a distinct role in making sure that our lives in this community is a place where children and families can thrive. And we must be committed to demonstrating the support for those children's healthy environment and for their healthy growth. We must protect our vulnerable children. We must strengthen our families. And we must prioritize preventiveness. We at the Kinsman House today all know the warning signs. We all know the warning signs witnessed by the educators, witnessed by neighbors, witnessed by relatives, which include unexplained injuries, inappropriate sexual behavior, the use of explicit language. But it's vitally important. It's so important to recognize these signs and address them and report them immediately to the appropriate authorities. Then that's when the work starts with our professional social workers, our case workers, our devoted employees at Children's Services Board. These employees pride themselves, as Tim Shafter will tell you, on the ability to effectively help those that they're here to serve. I'm profoundly moved by the important, meaningful work of the employees of Children's Services Board that they perform each and every day. You're also, as stated by Mayor Franklin, true heroes in our community. And your devotion to your life's work is greatly appreciated. Yes, these pinwells serve as a national symbol of child abuse and neglect and the National Campaign for Awareness. Ladies and gentlemen, that can't be overstated. But neither can the work be overstated by your committed professionals and the roles that they play, not today, not tomorrow, but for future generations. You are the ones who recognize the worst kind of fear that a ch child has that makes them scream but that fear sometimes steals her voice and makes them silent. These pinwheels, these names, can't be silent anymore. A poem by Helen Cromer sums it up perfectly. A man awake can wake another. The second can awake his next door brother. The third awake can rouse the town, turning the whole place upside down. And many awake, make a fuss. They finally awaken all of us. Thank you for being here. Thank you for inviting me to be part of this. And thank you again for, to the committed child welfare employees. Your work is unwavering. This poem reminds us that it's our challenge is simple. Help us awaken our county. Help us awaken our state. And we will be waken, America. Think about this. What if we were celebrating at this very same site, on this very same day, in the very same month of April, but the celebration was the absence of all the beautiful pinwheels, which demonstrates the importance of this awareness. May God bless you. May God continue to bless our courageous employees of Children's Services Board. And please, bless our children.
Thank you very much. Thank you, State Rep. Mike O'Brien. Oh, okay. okay. Getting, getting directions here. Um, you know who BACA is, you guys? Bikers Against Child Abuse? They're in the house, too. Thanks, Cindy, for coming up. They come every year. Um, they um, are, to me, representative of countless groups throughout our community um, who quietly take care of kids. Um, Pretty inspiring. Bonnie Wilson, she's, she's our kind of community leader. She brings us all together as director of our Family and Children First Council. Um, and she runs a grandparent group at, uh, at North Mar. Um, so a lot of our churches really pull together and, and carry us along. So um, I really appreciate it, um, Michael and, and commissioners and Mayor Franklin, all your kind words. I'm so glad our new staff are here to hear that and to hear the kind of support that we get in this community from everybody. Uh, we, we're going to close with uh, Harley Williams. He's, he's in the house somewhere. He's our pastor. He's also our educational and liaison and staffing master in our residential treatment center. Um, so he, he, wears, he wears multiple hats. Um, Mr. Gavitt's first board meeting, uh, we always start with a prayer and end with a prayer. We said a prayer, and he turned to me, and he said, we pray here? Um, he's a very spiritual man. And I said, it's constitutionally protected, and we need all the help we can get. So, um, My question was not his complaint. No, it was not. That's why I added he's a very spiritual man. Um, he was impressed. He was, he was, and he leads the prayer with some frequency at our board meetings. So um, I'm thankful we can close with a prayer. And I'm thankful for y'all coming today. So. Yeah, I told to remind you about the cookies and stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's supposed to remind me. Thank goodness people remind me of stuff. First of all, um, we've heard repeated thanks for uh, the use of the building. Jim, thank you so much. You'll give tours afterwards? Well, if you get done here, I'll be addressed it. Okay. All right. So after our prayer, let, let's talk about the building a little bit. They've been great hosts to us. And um, there are, where are the cookies at? Yeah. They're, I should have started with that. Yeah. Uh, no, then I'd have lost the. They're really good cookies. That's I really look forward to that. My wife placed their order to the side. Uh, all right, all right. So uh, Harley, close us up. Well, let's bow for a prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for today. We we come to you this morning first of all to uh, pray for our children and families world worldwide. Lord, uh, we think of all the things that we see on TV lately between the Ukraine and Russia and all the children that are starving and facing uh, trials around the world, Lord. But today we come to you specifically for Trumbull County. I pray for the, the agency, of course, and the different agencies that work with us. I pray for the, the families and the foster families and the, the police and the, and the politicians and everybody else that's involved in keeping these children safe. Lord, I pray especially a blessing upon those frontline workers that put themselves in danger, those that make the phone calls, those that make the policies and the procedures to... Uh, take these children from a place of risk and danger to a place of safety so that they can grow up and become uh, positive citizens in our world around us, Lord. And uh, we've seen over the years many of these children that grow up become the leaders in the future, and they've been through some tough times, Lord, but they help others see that they can make it through those tough times. Help us to reach out to stop child abuse and neglect, but also to help those who have to face that, to make a difference in our community, bless those that are doing that, Keep safety on those children that are facing this. In Christ, let me pray today. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. So um, Jim wants to talk a little about the house, Jim Bolesky, and we really appreciate it. And remember, families get better, right? And we all help. Thank you very much. Um, in 1832, this house was built by General Simon Perkins for a young bride, Olive, and her future husband, Frederick Kinsman. That's the name of Kinsman. The house was built to be a home to the young bride and her husband and their future family. Sadly, Olive wasn't able to raise any of the children past infancy. And she passed away at this house in 1828. Uh, but the house did go on to house a family. Uh, when Frederick remarried with Cornelia, and they had seven children. Uh, 
So today, it's our privilege to have children's services here. The mayor, Michael Bryan, these two gentlemen, if it wasn't for them, and the taxpayers of the city of Warren, this house wouldn't be possible. Um, so today, you are, the, you are the family. You are the house's family. And all of Kinsman is smiling down on you right now because you have now given, made this your home today. And the children, God bless. Thank you for being here. And, uh, and children's services, I can tell you this, that my wife and I are extremely appreciative on a private note of the services, children's services, not only here, but from Scio County. Uh, and it took a tragic situation and it turned into a happy one. Um, so we appreciate it. Uh, the house, um, Melanie's here, my wife's here, I'm here. If anybody has any questions, feel free to ask us. Uh, children's services has, and the, the gals from has set up refreshments in the uh, room just off, off the old uh, dining room there for you. So thank you, thank you. Uh, you made this old house very happy. Thank you. And I'm Crystal Hart reporting from the Kinsman House here in Warren, Ohio. Please come visit all the pinwheels that are on the front lawn. And remember, if you see something, say something. Report it to Trumbull County Children's Services. Thank mm -hmm. you.